everyone and welcome back to my weekly Sunday 9pm live video. I'm Dr. Tani Ping, consultant obstetrician and gynecologist and this is my weekly Sunday 9pm live video. So today we're talking, going to talk about endometriosis, a very specific endometriosis which is caesarean scar endometriosis. Caesarean scar endometriosis was previously not well recognized. These are things that we get to see more and more nowadays because of the rising rate of caesarean section. There are more people having a cesarean birth. As a result, we are seeing more and more of such complication. This topic was specially requested by one of you and today I'm going to talk more about it. I did touch a bit about this uh, topic earlier on in my topic of cesarean scar complication. So if you have missed that, you can go to my YouTube channel, Dr. Tan City Clinic and uh, look under the playlist of pregnancy and childbirth and look for cesarean scar complication. To be more specific, I'm going to talk today on caesarean scar endometriosis. This is a very uh, unique thing that if you ask me, it's probably not taught to us at all when we were in medical school. So many of very, very junior doctors may not even recognize this complication. So this is something that is getting more and more common nowadays because caesarean section rates are going up. Now on the average in Malaysia, we're talking about 20%. 20% caesarean rate. So because the caesarean rate has gone up, so you see more and more women with complications of cesarean. And if you're talking about a woman's lifetime of getting at least one cesarean, it's actually more than 20%. So the chances of seeing this complication is very high. So this uh, particular person, one of you who texted me, privately messaged me on this topic. Okay, so I'm going to read her message. I had a C-section done one year, nine months ago. I have been diagnosed with scar endometriosis. I had surgery to remove it. Her first question was, will I get this disease again? That is number one. Number two, I'm planning for a second baby. Will I be able to conceive? And when can I try for the second pregnancy? That was her first set of questions. Then after a period of time, she texted me again. Then now she said she did the surgery already. And after a year, one year after she did the surgery, she started having right-sided lower abdominal pain just before and during period. How do I overcome it? And she also mentioned, I can't bear the pain, doctor. I think that's very important. I can't bear the pain. So what happens with caesarean scar endometriosis? What usually people tell us? Everyone will complain about pain. The main complaint for caesarean scar endometriosis is pain. And they will tell you that as though they can feel there is this one little tiny lump on their tummy that is very painful during period or before period during period or slightly after period. And the interesting thing is, it depends on when you see the patient. Sometimes this lady present to us just maybe a year, two years after the cesarean. The lump may not be very big, the pain may not be very bad, but some come to us very much later where the lump become very big and the pain become very bad. And when I talk about cesarean scar endometriosis, I'm sure everybody will start thinking about the scar. But in reality, all the cesarean scar endometriosis that I've seen, they don't actually form on the scar. I'm going to show you what a caesarean scar look like. I'm sure those of you who have had one or many of you do know what it looks like. So this is a caesarean scar. Although sometimes we do see the endometriosis or the lump that lies on the scar, but more often than not, it's always higher. It's higher up. It's somewhere in between your belly button and your scar. Somewhere here. And most people will feel it's on the side. It's either right side or left side, but it's somewhere along this area. That's where you will start feel the, the lump or the pain. So if you have period pain somewhere around all this area before or during your period or slightly after your period. And the unique thing is you can actually feel like a tiny little uh, lump there. Maybe like a tiny little a peanut size or it may start with just a green pea size and slowly you will find it getting bigger. It may be a peanut size. You know, there is actually a lump that you can feel and you leave it long enough. The lump will actually start be not just become bigger, can even surface and you will actually see something on the skin, purplish or reddish or maroon color thing on the skin. So these are very, very bad. But normally these pictures I only see in the in the Google actually. In reality, most women don't wait until so bad. So most of the women who come and see me, they will just tell me they feel something there. They never even think about the scissor scar. They just feel something there that hurts them. And every time it hurts them, you will feel right when you have pain, you will put your hand there and then you will feel it. So when you have pain during or before period or shortly after period, and you can actually feel a lump there, we have to think about caesarean scar endometriosis. So most of the time what I need to do next is I just put an ultrasound scan and it's always very obvious it's there. How to solve the problem very much depends on what the woman wants and what are her plans. So let's talk about what is caesarean scar endometriosis. So first is what is endometriosis. If you have been following my videos, I'm sure I've mentioned a million times, endometriosis is ectopic endometrial lining. Means the endometrial lining is now found at a location that is not inside the uterus. 
So normally, this endometrial lining is the inner lining of the uterus. Inner lining of the uterus. So every month, our inner lining of the uterus actually sheds off our menstrual blood. That's where our menstrual blood comes from. So this inner lining of the uterus grows every month and sheds off during menses. But this inner lining of the uterus sometimes can go elsewhere. It can go to different, different places. And in this case, it actually goes to the caesarean scar. So you may think that the scar is just down there. You may think that the scar is just down there. But in actual fact, when we do a caesar, we don't just cut this place, yeah? We actually lift, oh, when we cut here, we lift the whole thing up. We lift it up. We lift all the skin up so your wound underneath your skin goes all the way up here. So this whole area, this whole area is part and parcel and your cesarean scar area, this whole area. So it's actually a very wide area and any of these places can have uh, the cesarean scar endometriosis. So how does it come? Actually, it can come by two methods. The first is just like any other endometriosis. When we say endometriosis means the inner lining transfer to another place. And no, endometriosis can just go anywhere. And I have also seen endometriosis at the belly button out of nowhere. They didn't have any surgery but just a there so endometriosis can just appear anywhere so there's nothing stopping the endometriosis to appear at where your tummy is at the lower part of your tummy upper part even anywhere so just like any other endometriosis endometriosis travels but that is not the commonest reason because the commonest reason is it still travels during your cesarean so what do you mean by during cesarean so you see in a cesarean we cut open the uterus right so we cut open the uterus, we take out the baby, we take out the placenta. There is definitely some endometrium inside the uterus and we stitch up everything. Somehow some endometrium left behind on the scar. We cannot blame the doctor. Is that the doctor's fault? No, it's not the doctor's fault because we can't see endometrium. Blood is red, endometrium is red. How to tell the difference? We can't. So as we stitch, we see some blood, we clean the blood. As we stitch, we see some blood, we clean the blood. But maybe there's some that we think we clean, but actually there is still something left behind and that's not blood anymore, but that is endometrium. So endometrium can be left behind at the surgical field during a cesarean. So honestly, it can be left behind at every layer of the caesar scar. You know, we talk about caesarean scar is seven layers, yeah? So I have seen endometriosis outside the uterus, between the uterus and the bladder, because in a caesarean, we actually cut open the a, a layer between the bladder and the uterus. So I've also seen it there. And of course, it can be on the muscles and the fat area and also the skin area. So it can appear at anywhere. But the commonest we find is two areas only. One is between the uterus and the bladder and the other one in the muscle. And when you can feel it, means it's at the muscle. And that's the cesarean uh, scar endometriosis that we need to deal with, okay? That is very common. So whenever we say cesarean scar endometriosis, actually whenever we say cesarean scar endometriosis, we usually mean the skin, the fats and the muscle layer. That's what we usually mean lah, because that one we can see, we can feel. But the ones inside, on the, between the bladder and the uterus, you probably will not be able to see and not be able to feel. So this lady, her first question was, can she get pregnant after this? So the answer is, uh, she had a surgery for it. In fact, that's the right thing to do. In most cases, we will do a surgery for it. We will remove the endometriosis. And that's the right thing for it. And in this lady, she already had her surgery. But when she had the surgery done, she, her, her first question was, will it come back? And the next question was, can I get pregnant? Okay, so the answer, it all depends. It all depends. Number one, is it just endometriosis in your caesar scar or do you have any endometriosis everywhere else? So we don't know actually. We don't know because when we remove the endometriosis scar endometriosis, it is a superficial scar. It's superficial surgery. So we just remove superficially. We don't go in and we don't see anything inside. We don't know. And because we don't know, so we also do not know whether will it affect her trying to get pregnant. But so far, all my cases that I've seen, all of them managed to conceive. So the first question is, we do not know because we do not know whether it is only there or anywhere else. That will be the first question. Second question, because she asked whether will it come back, then it also depends whether the surgery removed the endometriosis completely or not. So sometimes you must understand, especially if it's on the muscle and if it's very big, we have to remove part of the muscle. So if you remove a very big section of the muscle, 
it is quite difficult to close back. So if you present at a very, very late stage, maybe the doctor will remove what he can remove because he tried not to make touch a big hole. So maybe there's a little bit left behind that can cause it to come back. But if you present to a small and then it's easy to make a small hole, nobody will spare your muscles. So we just remove everything cleanly. Then of course, it is less likely to come back. So whether it will come back or not depends on whether it is just one area, that's one endometriosis you have and you don't have any more endometriosis. And number two is whether the endometriosis was removed fully. So again, will it affect you trying to get pregnant again? It all depends whether this endometriosis is only there or in other places. Because if you have endometriosis in other places, as I've mentioned many times, endometriosis is a very common cause of fertility problem. So a lot of women who cannot get pregnant is due to endometriosis. In fact, there's a lot of women after a cesarean section also, they find it more difficult to get pregnant. Because if we were to compare a thousand women with natural birth and a thousand women with cesarean section and how fast they get pregnant after that, on average, the group with natural birth always get pregnant faster than the group with cesarean. So there are some amount of women with a previous cesarean, they actually find it very difficult to get pregnant after the cesarean. So it could be also due to endometriosis, but not the ones on the skin or your muscle, it's the one elsewhere. Like I told you, you can't have it between the bladder and the uterus, you can have it anywhere. Then after that, she texts me again sometime later and probably another year after that, and she's still trying to get pregnant, I think. But now she starts to feel pain again. She starts to feel pain at her lower tummy before and during period. Ha, huh, see? But she doesn't say that she feels the pain at the previous scar area. She just feels that she starts having pain at her lower tummy. So in this case, she could be having some other endometriosis somewhere else. Not sure is it because the surgery was not complete or was it because she has endometriosis somewhere else and it's starting to surface. So that's what. So that's why for most of my cases that I see, we, I will always want to explore again, do you want to get pregnant after this or you're going to wait a bit? Because sometimes after the first baby, they may want to wait like three years, four years before they want to get pregnant again. So if you are going to wait, then my advice is to still be on some form of hormonal therapy. As I mentioned in all my endometriosis videos, complete treatment of endometriosis cannot just stop with one surgery. When you stop with one surgery, if you are lucky, you're fine. If you're not lucky, endometriosis will come back. If you have watched my videos, if you have not, you can always go back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Tan City Clinic. Go to the playlist on endometriosis. And there's so many endometriosis videos. So what are the key things in endometriosis? We always talk about early diagnosis, number one. So that's why we want to detect early and do something early. So early diagnosis is very important. So if it's late, then sometimes surgery may not be as clean. That's what we worry. We want it early. And when we talk about uh, surgery, we always talk about complete excision, complete removal of disease. Uh, don't do some disease, leave things behind. Because when you leave things behind, endometrial is active cell. Because endometriosis is endometrial lining in a location that is not inside the uterus anymore. So it is in a foreign location. It is in any location actually. Endometriosis can appear anywhere in your body. So if you have this endometrial lining that is left behind, which is active cell, it will definitely grow back. So when we do surgical treatment, we must aim for complete removal of disease. But for caesarean scar, nobody's going to go into your tummy. Most people are just going to remove that little lump that you could feel, but we want to remove fully. So in order to remove fully, again, the most important thing is you must reach us early. You must reach us early and not few years of pain and suffering before you look for a gynae. And last of all, I always say you must have preventive measures. You don't just do a surgery and say, I'm okay, I'm bye bye already. I'm okay, I'm happy, let's forget about it. No, endometriosis never let you off so easily. You must be on some form of preventive treatment. So all my patients, all the women who see me with endometriosis scar, uh, caesarean scar endometriosis, I always put them on long-term treatment. You must have long-term preventive treatment. Because some women, they want to get pregnant, right? So we can't put them on anything. We can still do something. Lifestyle modification is one. As I mentioned in my previous videos, we need to think about lifestyle modification. And also, we need to help her to get pregnant faster. She need to understand that she only allowed one year at the most to try and get pregnant. If not, she will have to go through all the fertility testing just like anyone else. If she has no problem with her first pregnancy, that means she got pregnant easily before this. And then now, if she has problem trying to get pregnant, then my best guess is she has endometriosis in another location that is not allowing her to get pregnant. So because if you have endometriosis in the cesarean scar, outside the uterus that is between the uterus and the bladder that will also make it difficult for her to get pregnant 
So she definitely need a full workout on why she's not getting pregnant. If all other tests are normal, we need to seriously think about endometriosis. So something needs to be done. She definitely needs a proper surgery for the rest of her endometriosis. So for her, if I were to give an advice, I will want to do a detailed deep endometriosis scan for her. So not a routine normal ultrasound scan done by most uh, gynees when you go for your normal checkup. No, it is a detailed deep endometriosis scan. She probably definitely need that. And also I will just do some simple tests like sperm tests, blood tests, just to get other causes of fertility out of the way, which I think most likely um, is not really a problem because she already got previous pregnancies and she definitely need a definitive treatment for her endometriosis. All right, so I think that's all I have to say about cesarean scar endometriosis. If you have missed previous videos on either a cesarean scar complication or videos on endometriosis, do go to my YouTube channel, Dr. Tan City Clinic. And uh, please uh, don't forget, subscribe, yeah, and like my video, okay? All right, so thank you for staying tuned and see you again next week, same day, same time. Bye-bye.